one of the big things that you have to be able to do for Unit 7, um, and we are pretty much at the finish line at this point, is look at foreign exchange markets. Now, when we talk about foreign exchange, what we're looking at is different currencies. You might have, for, for example, um, a question where you're going from yuan to dollars, or where you're going from euro to pesos or something. It's not uncommon for those kinds of things to show up. And they do tend to pick on some currencies instead of others. Um, but there is a trick to getting these graphs right. And there's a batch of situations that tend to repeat themselves with these questions. So what situations are you likely to be dealing with? One of the most common ones would be related to travel. Another scenario that you might see is related to trade. Um, with travel, you might be dealing with issues of tourism. Travel, trade, tourism. And very simply, you might have an example where it just tells you, oh, by the way, this currency just happens to appreciate. So you might be dealing with just straight currency values that don't have a lot to do with anything else. But those are the ones that I've seen most often. Okay, so those are the ones that you're most likely to see, and I'm going to go through a nice comprehensive example of this for you to show you how these work. All right, so let's say, for example, you have a problem that says, um, let's see, that French tourists are coming to the United States to go shopping because of a weak dollar. That was much in the news last year. Okay, so we have French shopping tourists. Like they're coming to a specific country just to go shopping and then get back on a plane and go home. If the dollar has depreciated a certain amount against the euro, how likely are the French to surrender? You're going to give me trouble. You better. You better I'll believe it. You better. Okay. All right. Now, it was funny when this was in the news because <coughs> you had Excuse people me. coming from Europe into the United States to buy European goods to then take back to Europe because they were that much cheaper because the dollar was so weak. Now, what we're dealing with if we're talking about the French coming to the United States is the difference between the dollar and the euro. Okay? And what they're going to be doing is exchanging euros for dollars. So we can start with the euro market over here and then we can go with the dollar market over here. And you can go ahead and label your graphs. Euro market, dollar market. Now, this is not going to be the same as a money market graph because we're not talking about money availability. We're talking about currency availability in international currency markets. Money that can be exchanged for other currencies to then be spent. Now, the way to not mess this up is to say, okay, if this is the euro market, the euro is on the bottom, and then we want the dollar price of the euro up here. In this one, the dollar is on the bottom, so up here we want the euro price of the dollar. Now, how do you not get that backwards? The one on the bottom goes on the bottom. One over here on the fraction, the one on the bottom goes on the bottom. And that's the market that we're in. Okay, so that will keep you from messing up your labeling. You gotta have this much right in order to even start the problem. Hey, that's simple and straightforward. It's also very consistent, but we'll get there. Now, in terms of supply and demand, just your basic graphs demand, supply, demand. They don't have to have the same shape. Supply, put in your equilibrium. That's your price. You know, you can even call this quantity equilibrium, and that's your price. Now, 
You have to think about which way the money is going. So you have French tourists who are coming to the United States to go shopping. In order to do that, they have to have more euros available to change into dollars. So what's happening here? They are supplying euro. Euros. They are supplying euros. Meaning that, you know, maybe they pull some money out of the bank. They want to exchange the currencies. They're supplying more euros into the financial markets to switch over. They supply more euros. Now, to go shopping, they have to have more dollars. Supply over here, they demand more dollars because they need dollars to spend. Now, every single problem I've seen dealing with foreign exchange markets, you have one supply curve shift and one demand curve shift, and they always go in the same direction. Now, how do you explain this? You say, okay, what happens to the price of the euro? The euro has depreciated relative to the dollar. Over here, the dollar has appreciated relative to the euro. This one went up relative to the euro. This one went down relative to the dollar. You have to get a consistent result. You can't have them both appreciating relative to each other because it doesn't make any sense. But everyone I've ever seen, they both shift right, one supply, one demand, or they both shift left, one supply, one demand. You just have to think about which curve is which. That's the only hard part of these problems.